Hey, Steph, welcome back to our cool series that we're creating. And we're calling it your inner power series. And in our in part one, we talked about the raw mechanics behind the human experience. And for this one, I thought it'd be really cool if we could explore this question. What is state of mind? Like, what, what is it really? And how understanding it changes everything? Hey, Nico. Good to see you again. Um, yeah, it's quite a big question, actually. It's quite a big question. What is state of mind? I think before I um, came to this understanding that we talk about, the inside out understanding, I... In my head, I always thought state of mind was something that was a little bit like, I don't know, mindset, you know, a kind of fixed idea of how to approach a situation or a person or a, a problem or whatever. And, and, and I kind of very quickly saw that that, wasn't true that there is no such thing as a mindset or a fixed state of mind mm. what i saw was that state of mind is all to do with how much clarity we have or not. It's to do with the quality of thinking that we have, whether the quality of thinking that we have is helpful and creative and inspired or whether it's negative and, you know, the, the self-talk and the criticism that we have and the, uh, the worry and anxiety, state of mind. I, I think I, I've seen that, it, that we, all day, every day, each of us, and this is true for all humans, I think it's universal, is that we have the potential to sit on a continuum of differing states of mind. All day, every day, we can go from low, uh, anxious, worried, stressed, to relatively high, where there is less on our mind and there's clarity like i said inspiration kindness and so when we talk about state of mind it's it's really good to know that that's kind of how the game is set up that we're gonna go in and out up and down it's going to happen regardless of circumstances you know it's going to happen regardless of our best efforts to have our best thinking and that's really important to know what what would be your description of state of mind? Mm. I resonate with what you were sharing in the beginning, because I was, as you were sharing, what occurred to me was, I remember what your state of mind used to look like, because to me, it also looked like a mindset. And when I first started getting into personal development, I think the premise or what it looked like to me was, you need to have successful mindsets in order to have a successful life. And if you can't do that, you're doomed to fail. And you always have to manage your mindset. And it felt like, oh, another thing I have to do, another thing I have to manage. 
not really. And I kind of took that for a word and not really looking at the nature of what mindset was or what state of mind was. And in being in the conversation of the three principles and, and looking at the nature of what state of mind is, I came to the same conclusion as you, that there is no such thing as a mindset. It is an idea. And I saw that how, for me, state of mind looked like levels of consciousness and that when I was in really good states of mind, the world looked different than it did when I was in poor states of mind. And then I, I realized that I, I no longer needed to manage my states of mind, but it was far more important for me to recognize where my state of mind was at so I could understand what I was seeing in front of me. And I've learned to be more interested in, in that noticing, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. And that's really helped me to navigate. It feels feel like it's helped me to better navigate life. And for example, um, in my other businesses or martial arts businesses, when I'm in a bad mood, I know I know better now not to make any d- decisions. I know that, oh, like you're really caught up right now. Like maybe we need to go for a walk or we need to settle on. And that's not to manage a state of mind. That's just to get off, get off, get off trying to solve a problem that's not really a problem. And even yeah. the other end is really true. I've noticed that I'm really happy and I'm really excited. I've I've learned that excitement is not a reliable navigational tool because I've been excited about a lot of terrible decisions <laughs> that end up being terrible <laughs> decisions. So I'm just I was like, oh, wow, like I'm really excited right now. I, I, I know better to let myself settle before taking another look. Yeah. And for me, it's changed everything by knowing that I know I'm living in the feeling of my thinking and there's a whole world beyond what I think it is. Yeah. And and understanding how little I know and how much more out there there is, and my curiosity just blossomed and my creativity and my innovation and it helped me work with my clients better because when we can see that, I think so much more becomes available and the problems, oh, this is the best part. I think most of the biggest problems I was trying to solve, they just looked like problems because of my state of mind was not in a good place and it looked like a real problem. But when my state of mind shifted, it didn't look like a real problem. So I can give, I have a real life example, a very recent one, because I was in Korean training for 10 days. It was for Taekwondo. On the second day, I twisted my knee and it was a severe injury. I was told it was a severe ligament injury. Um, And it was, I couldn't walk on on, on my left leg. I couldn't put any weight on it. And I realized that being upset about it wasn't helpful and I kind of went blank in terms of my state of mind like I couldn't be upset about it I was a little disappointed and then and it was like okay it's on me to fix my knee I have to figure this out but I I really let that go and just kind of sat quietly with myself and my knee and the right people showed up to help heal my knee in fact there's a wonderful master from India who helped over 10 days, helped me really rehabilitate my knee to by the 10th day I could kick and walk on that knee. Mm. And it was incredible. Whereas I think before, if I didn't understand what I understand now, I think I would have had, I think that experience would probably have ruined my whole trip. But it didn't. I had the time of my life, even with my busted knee. (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. Such a good example. I think that what people don't always appreciate with state of mind is that how can I put this? It has everything to do with every single moment of our day it has it 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 kind of flavors every conversation every interaction we have with people from work or from home it affects how um how effective we are in everything that we do at work or at home again, or 
every single moment of every single day, there is, uh, there is uh, our state of mind plays out on our experience. Mm. So when you know that, as you were describing, whether our state of mind is 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 high quality or low quality we get to have the choice whether to react to a situation like you say you know if somebody uh, it feels as though somebody says something we don't like we can either go for their throat <laughs> metaphorically or we can take a step back and we can understand the feeling that we're feeling and recognize that that annoyance, frustration, wanting to attack is coming from the state of mind, is coming from our thinking in that moment, the thinking that we're believing rather than the situation or the other person so instead of reacting and you just described it beautifully we get to respond to a situation oh. we get to take a step back we get to take a breath and just that 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 moment of taking a step back and realizing that my quality of thinking at the moment, my state of mind isn't helpful, allows us that that just that little breather to then respond to the situation in, in an appropriate way, rather than strangling somebody to death. <laughs> and I so I, I can't I can't even, you know, I can't say just how important it is because just to have that understanding in your instance you talked about it could have ruined your whole week mm. your whole two weeks but you were able to take that step back and at some point know that your state of mind was going to come back you know you were going to come back to neutral mm. you were come come going to come back to clarity and 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 you did. And knowing that it's on a pendulum, you know, it's a, a continuum. We we kind of always come back to neutral. That's what that's what life does. It's always trying to bring us back to neutral. And mm. knowing that helps us to to navigate those blips. So I, I think there is there. This is you know like a lifetime's worth of exploration, but I think it is life changing, transformational to actually begin to understand how it works. Hmm. For for someone listening who. Who might who, who would start to be curious about their state of mind what would you say to someone or what would you recommend for them to start noticing how can they start noticing better noticing their state of mind um <clears throat> well it seems to me uh, that there is an a built-in um built in design to help us do that mm. and i know when i first you know began exploring this understanding what i would do i was told you know that that, that thought creates feeling mm. and so i would look really hard at the thought that i thought was creating this feeling you know the thought of sadness or the thought of anxiety or the thought of anger whatever was behind my feeling and i think after a while 
it didn't help because my 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 kind of exploration into the thinking that was causing the problem was just giving me more thinking i was going down a rabbit hole with it so i was pointed in the direction of you know, don't look towards the thoughts mm. look towards the feeling that you're feeling if you're feeling in any kind of discomfort if you're feeling in any kind of mood that you don't want to be in, then you know that your mind is off. You know that the quality of your thinking is not helpful. And you know that thinking that you're having will eventually pass through it will eventually it will eventually disappear and therefore the experience you're having will change and disappear so so that to answer your question it's noticing the feeling that i'm in noticing if i'm in any discomfort of some sort and then at that point taking that step back at that point getting off the, the hamster wheel that my brain has been going around mm. and just taking a holiday from that from the thinking that I'm having that I'm believing in that moment I don't have to do anything else but just notice it. And for me, the mind is amazing. It kind of does the rest. Yeah. How comforting and kind that is when I hear you say that. And what occurred to me is kind of a whole new relationship to feelings. Whereas I think before feelings were something to do something about either to stay away from the bad feelings or to only feel good. And rather than just taking a step back and, and using it for what it was naturally built to be used for just navigation. Exactly. Period. Navigation. Period. And I think, you know, when you open your phone and or you're driving somewhere, like the most helpful thing is to know where you're at because knowing where you're at on the map helps you get to where you're going. And the more I think about it that way, the simpler it looks. That, oh, I'm, and in my case, oh, I'm, I'm upset about my knee. Okay, so I have, I have thinking about my knee. And the moment I dropped that, it made space for people to come and support me. When working with clients who are caught up in their thinking about their businesses and oh, that they're, they're just upset about their businesses. It has no reflection on them, their business or their potential. And as soon as they come back down, I've noticed time and time again as creativity comes back, innovation comes back, flow comes back, and a week later they're doing great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. The system is awesome. It's, as you say, really kind mm. and really intelligent. We just have to begin to get a sense of how it works yeah. and let it work. I'm going to repeat that because that was really cool. Begin to get a sense of how it works and then let it work. Get out the way. And I think this is a great place to put a pin on it because we're going to be back with the next part. And the next part, we're going to be diving into how to deal with stress, overwhelm, and where it comes from and why you don't need to suffer from it, even with a busy life. And so thank you for listening. This was a pleasure. And thank you, Steph, for doing this series with me. I think I'm so grateful to you. And as I'm listening to you, I'm getting more and more insights into the nature of mind, consciousness, and thought. It's absolutely my pleasure. And, and I'm also getting insights and learning, listening from your examples too. It's a, it's a, a, a beautiful conversation that feeds and nourishes both of us. Mm. Excellent. All right. I'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye.